Hi, this is Ron Clark. I'm here to introduce you today to a tool called the Unifier. It doesn't look like much compared to some of my other more elaborate tools, but it is the tool really closest to my heart, shall we say. It's perhaps the most powerful of all the tools. All the tools I have made, uh, specifically for the TMO Working Group, were about awareness and consciousness. The uh, um, communicator, the, the black mirror, uh, was used to focus awareness. The integrator to integrate awareness. The uh, consecrator to digest awareness. And the unifier is designed to unify awareness. Now this is different than integrating awareness. Uh, to integrate awareness, you know, we unite the four levels of awareness into a whole, but it is still uniting four levels of awareness. The unifier takes it to a different level. It unifies the awareness to where there are no distinguishable levels of awareness, it is a singular whole from Kether to Malkuth, but as a singular whole, not Kether, Tiferet, Yesod, Malkuth. Um, so it's much more complete, shall we say, and opens uh, one to a more powerful uh, level of awareness for any magical work specifically for group work. I designed this tool specifically for the working group to help us achieve a state of unification of awareness that we ended up calling the working group entity. This was a, a separate, yet not separate, uh, level of awareness that formed when we unified our awareness, which is different than integrating our awareness so that we're several people working together, instead we ended up as one singular individual doing the work, um, composed of all of us, but it was a unified awareness, not a um, not an integrated awareness, as it were. It's sort of hard to explain. Um, so, to explain this lovely tool, I'll be reading from the user manual that I developed for the members of the working group. So, the unifier, the sole function of the unifier is to facilitate a unification of awareness among all the participants present, effectively causing the formation of a working group ent entity and hopefully bringing all the participants into full consciousness as the working group entity. So, <clears throat> the unifier derives its ability to unify awareness from an alchemical substance known as the universal matter, which is given to me as a gift by an alchemist friend. From these crystals, are derived the alchemical substances known as philosophical mercury, sulfur, and salt, the components of the philosopher's stone. The primary quality of the universal matter is that it physically manifests the spiritus mundi, which is to say the universal mind or life force. It is aware and it emanates. Its emanation is at all three levels, physical, astral, and mental, and the energy it emanates at these levels is universal in nature. In other words, it's not just affecting human beings, it's affecting everything. As it emanates this universal energy, it encounters no resistance, uh, <clears throat> which is to say that it finds commonality with everything it encounters, hence the unique quality of facilitating the unification of separate awarenesses. Its effect upon awareness, however, requires a trigger to activate. In other words, if you were merely in the same room with it, 
and weren't aware of its presence and actively thinking about it, you would never notice its effects. It's as if these facilities within the matter were normally sleeping and awaken only when its awareness brushes against it. Only when an awareness brushes against it. And this, of course, makes it perfect for our needs. So, the construction of this little tool. The structure of the unifier is intended to focus and amplify the universal matter specific property of unifying awarenesses. It's also something I have to add now, is things I've realized about this tool since then, since its creation, which was primarily just intuitive. Um, the universal matter said, I need this, <laughs> and so I made this. What it needed was to be tinted or some, uh, slightly tuned to human awareness for this tool to function in the way that it does. So I've used ingredients in here that have no other function than adding the, the a quality of humanness to the universal matter. So sort of specifying how the energy is going to manifest and what part of its energy I'm going to amplify uh, by the tool itself. So. Um, to accomplish this, I have employed the geometry of a ten-sided figure, a decagon, and a variety of materials. The decagon represents the ten sephirotic principles and can be drawn in four forms. So, one, two, three, and four. Representing the tree of life in each of the four Kabbalistic worlds. Uh, other materials include the usual materials that I work with, cardboard, uh, quartz, uh, copper, gold, silver, um, and in this case, a beard. A beard that I had grown quite long uh, until the, um, the summer solstice of uh, 2005. Uh, I built this tool in, uh, let's see, what it, what was it, uh, October through November of 2005. Um, so I used my own beard in here, and um, the alchemical um, universal matter, which was given to me by a very special alchemist friend, and a, um, a stone, a plant stone of rosemary given to me by another uh, alchemist friend. So, construction occurred in three phases. The base, the chamber, and the top. The base is painted black and contains ten six-ounce lead weights aligned with corners for a total of three and a half pounds of lead in the base. Stationed between each lead disc pointing inward and aligned with the flat sides are ten small wands, each of which is composed of three copper tubes bound together by a wrapping of gold wire and topped by a small fluoride octahedron attached with the gold wire. Occupying the center of the three are three double-ended quartz crystals oriented to the compass points and bound together with copper wire. The larger crystal defines the east-west continuum, and the two smaller ones define north and south individually. Okay, the chamber. The chamber, which contains the universal matter, is five inches tall, and is painted a very dark Akashic purple externally, and a zinc white internally. Each of the ten flat sides is pierced by a small hole, which has been reinforced by a brass washer inside and out. On the floor of the interior, there is a gold-painted geometric cutout combining all four forms of the decagon, in the center of which is a two-tiered gold-painted platform to hold the universal matter. 
Centered on each flat side of the purple exterior is a silver ten-pointed ten star with a colored center representing each of the ten sephirot. The sephirotic colors progress counterclockwise starting with white kether in the east. The holes that pierce each side are centered in this colored area. Chamber is glued to the base, forever enclosing the lead crystals and wands within. Once the chamber is glued to the base, I began the process of wiring the chamber with 28 gauge dead soft 14 karat gold filled and sterling silver solid wire. <laughs> the wiring mimics the geometric cutout on the floor of the chamber and is anchored to each flat side by passing through the pierced hole and wrapping around a small copper tool, a tube on the exterior. And here are some pictures detailing the whole of the interior. Um, unfortunately, my camera at the time was pretty shitty and it didn't really capture the, uh, the gold wire um, weaving on the in inside. Um, but it's there. <laughs> Once I wove the first gold wire, I noticed that my compass was suddenly registering at a 45 degree variance in the magnetic field. This disturbance in the magnetic field fluctuated between 15 and 62 degrees during the long and delicate wiring process, changing each time a new wire was woven in. It was fascinating. When all the weaving was done, I placed the whole volume of my old beard beneath the wire. So it's sitting on the floor of the chamber, right above the uh, gold cutout, uh, and right below the woven wire. Then using gold wire, I attached ten small double-ended quartz crystals each of which was wrapped with a coil of both gold and silver wire, to the woven wires surrounding the place where the universal matter would sit. Each crystal is aligned so that it points between the universal matter and the flat sides of the chamber. Yes, the, the little crystals are often called Herkimer diamonds. Um, they're very compact, very powerful little seeds of full of energy. Then came the placement of the vial of universal matter. Immediately upon placing the vial in its pedestal, the disturbance of the magnetic field diminished to a scant five degrees. This felt very confirming that I had gotten it all correct at that point. It should be noted that I inserted a copper tube through the pedestal which penetrates into the base and establish a connection between the crystals below and the vial of universal matter. So the universal matter sits on top of a copper connector to all of what's going on in the base. All those crystals and the lead weights and all of that is connected to the vial. This was followed by the addition of several grains a spagyric exalted rosemary plant stone. As I sprinkled the stone over the beard, I was overwhelmed by the most wonderful and intense aroma of rosemary. Oh my God, it just blew me away how lovely that was. Once the chamber was complete, I permanently sealed it off by the addition of the top. So it's sealed off. There's no opening at all anymore. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, the top. The pattern on the top is a variation of the gold painted cutout on the floor of the chamber. Here, however, the four decagons are drawn one inside the other, uh -huh, with a final most complex ten-pointed star painted silver instead of gold. At the center of the top, there is a hole. You can sort of see it there. <coughs> whereupon sits the topmost quartz sphere, along with five much smaller holes through which will be drawn up 
the ends of the gold wires that attach to the small double-ended crystals that are woven to the gold and silver wires within the chamber. All those ten crystals that were uh, right here in the top of the chamber, there is a gold wire that comes from them up here into this through a little copper tube accessed by up here where I can then tie it all together. <clears throat> Okay, once the top is glued in place and the five wires were drawn up through the smaller holes, copper tubes were slipped over the wires and a pentagonal structure of copper tubing and gold wire was built up to secure the quartz sphere in place. It just holds it there, basically. Okay, now here are some pictures of each side of the unifier. They all look quite the same, except the uh, sephirotic uh, color indication is different on each side. And here are a couple of pictures, a close-up of the top, which you won't get here with this camera. Now, <clears throat> using the unifier. The key to using the unifier and to triggering the properties of the universal matter at its heart is simply to picture the vial of universal matter hidden within the unifier's chamber. It's that easy. As you visualize the universal matter, simply allow it to draw your awareness into the unifier. To that end, here are some detailed photos of the vial of universal matter and its placement in the unifier. Now you see it here, it's poking out of the stand that I built in the center little platform, surrounded by the ten small crystals, little Herkimer diamonds that I described, sitting, uh, you know, basically at the level of the wire uh, web um, between all ten points. Okay? As long as you can picture that specific uh, placement of the universal matter, you can use the unifier. The unifier may be used by a single individual alone or by a group of individuals. When used by a single individual alone, the unifier will have the effect of automatically unifying all the levels of that person's awareness. That's, it can take a while, it's interesting, it, there's sort of a solidification and a, a very fluid moment, moment, really, when it's sort of the, the rigidity of the structure of one's awareness melts and becomes a puddle uh, that is all one thing. Um, like, it, it, yeah, <laughs> it's interesting. And sometimes it takes a while, I think especially in the beginning working with universal matter. It can take a moment for you to really let go. That's what it comes down to, letting go and letting the universal matter just do its business. Um, it's very gentle, um, and very benign. Uh, this. The universal matter has no agenda. Um, it's not there to do something to you. This is simply what happens uh, because it is the universal matter, the universal solvent. It shares commonality with everything, which means that it can enter into everything. Nothing presents a barrier to uh, its making that connection. Here, because of my beard and my hands making it, the tool uh, has tuned it to human awareness, specifically human awareness. So, in a connection with the universal matter is established, as described above, and once their levels of awareness have been unified, the individual may then do what they please as a unified awareness independent of the unifier. In other words, it unifies your awareness and your awareness stays unified when you 
move to do other things within limits. The unifier does not hold on to, constrict, or contain an awareness after unifying it, but rather it continues to support and maintain unification until the individual wishes to return to a more normal state of consciousness. Or, alternatively, when you lose your train of thought and start thinking about the shopping list instead of what you are focusing on, that severs the connection with the universal matter. Which then, of course, is very easy to reestablish by just, again, connecting with the visual of the universal matter sitting there in the unifier. When used by a group, the unifi unifier will have the effect of first internally unifying the levels of awareness of each participant. So, it first unifies each individual participant just like I described with the, you know, using it by an individual. And then secondly, of automatically unifying all the awarenesses present into a single working group entity. In, otherwise, in other words, it, 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 it blends the awarenesses until you produce a separate or a distinct awareness um, that it's different than any individual awareness. And when you're working as part of that group that has unified awareness into uh, an entity, um, there, there is no individual doing. In other words, I don't have to decide that we need to do this and then this and then this. I simply am adding my, uh, my presence, my will, my energy into what the entity itself is doing. It knows the, the right way to do something. The most efficient, oh, working as the working group entity was just so efficient and so quick um, because it knew exactly what to do, where to, you know, apply the pressure. Uh, uh, it was really an amazing experience. And... I experienced no distrust of this. I didn't feel like I was giving up um, myself um, to this other entity's doing because that other entity was myself at the same time. Um, but there was no individual doing. It was all the group doing um, fully and uh, equally. Um, yeah. <laughs> Okay, each participant must individually establish their own connection with the universal matter as described above. So, as long as you are all continuously connected in this way, the, that entity exists. Once one of you starts thinking about the shopping list, that entity crumbles. It is dependent on everybody who enters into the entity, their continuous participation. So it requires a continuity of attention and awareness for it to continue on. <clears throat> Once the awareness of all participants have been unified internally and as a group, they are then function as the working group entity. And when the group's work is finished, the unified awarenesses are split from each other and from the unified the, from the unifier's influence by simply willing itself. In other words, you can connect just as easily as you can disconnect. There is no overriding of your will whatsoever by the entity or by the universal matter. It's all a matter of your will. Okay, now, the unifier has been given a permanent shield <clears throat> to prevent use by anyone wishing to accomplish a negative aim, okay, it just, period. It serves one function to unify your awareness, and that's it. 
you cannot in that state by this agent do anything that will have a negative impact. Um, it was also at the time, while the uh, um, working group existed, given a shield that prevented anybody but a working group member from using it. I have since removed that shield. So, that means that if you wish, you are welcome to use the unifier. Uh, all you have to do is go back to that image of the universal matter sitting in the center of the unifier and you connect with it. And you can withdraw your connection anytime you want. Reconnect with it anytime you want. And experience the influence of the universal matter. Now, I make no guarantees. This has never been tried before. Um, when it was uh, members of the working group, we were really quite adept at projecting our awareness into a specific uh, space and time, etc. So, it's all up to you. It's there if you want to try. And so, that ends my series of videos on magical tools. That's all the magical tools I have at the moment um, until I come up with new magical tools in the future should I ever do so. Uh, that will have to be the end of it for now. Um, I'm not entirely sure, I'm not entirely certain what my next video series will be, but I think it will be called Permuting the Tree, if that gives you any clues. So, until then, bye-bye. <clears throat>